it is I might not get all my specs in here, but I'll try and get them all in here. Um, facing pages, what the heck? Give it five pages, start on one. Ah, okay. Yep. Actually, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. Um, have I talked about master pages? Mm -mm. Okay. All right. You have so, that sample video up on. Yep. But let me let me talk about it anyway. So. Um, or rather, they're actually now called parent pages. I have a feeling, I don't know. Somebody decided the word master apparently was not the right word to use. And so now they've got them called parent pages. So if you go to look at your pages palette, you know, we can double click on these various pages and it'll take us to those pages. Up above, these pages, there are, there's a page that says none and a page that says a parent. Now, there's a couple of things about this a parent. One, um, just a second. And create a new one, file new documents. And I actually wanted two columns, create. Okay, so there's my document. And I've created a two column document and every single page has two column, a two column grid on it. Okay, um, that grid actually is created on this a parent document. Okay, and if I want to change the this grid on every single page, I can't just do it here. Layout margins and columns, make it one, click OK. If you notice, it doesn't do anything to that page or that page or the other pages. It only happens to that one page. We can see. So, however, if we change these, the um, layout up here on this A parent layout, so I only have this left page selected. If I go to margins and columns, I change it to one. I click OK. Now, the left hand page all the way through the document is one column. And if I go here, layout, margins, and columns. So now I've selected, selected them both and I've changed them on both. And now you go through your document. And the grid is changed on every page where there was this letter A, which indicates that it is taking its uh, message from a parent. 
And if I go back up here and I drag a box and I fill it like that, and I look on my pages, anything that I create on this A parent shows up on every other page. And if I go back up here and I change this, and I change its color, you'll see that it that that change then happen, happens universally throughout the document. So if you had wanted, for instance, to have a little box at the top like this, and you wanted to have your headline, um, like that, and you wanted that to run throughout your document, the best way is to put it on the master page and then it shows up everywhere. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. All right, now, you probably want to put a page number on your document, right? Um, and for that matter, I'm going to go here. And you probably didn't know this, but we can drag more pages down from your A parent like that. And let's see, so I'm going to just quickly do, I double click here, layout, numbering and section options, start page numbering at one, section prefix C, style one, two, include, click OK, layout, numbering and section options. Uh, start at one, I click OK, layout, numbering and section options, start numbering at one, one, two, three, four. OK, so I've got this now all set up like that. Now I want to add a page number to my document. So the way we want to set up the page numbers, first I'm going to start off here. Um, it's a good idea to pull down a guide to help you place this. So I'm going to place it about there. And if you hold your shift key when you pull down a guide, it will lock to um, the actual measurements on the ruler rather than sort of in between things. I'm going to create a text box. Okay, and if I type one, actually two, uh, left pages are always even and uh, right pages are always odd on books. So if I type in a two and I go here, and you go through the document, you'll see that everything is a number two. So that's not gonna help me um, put page numbers in. 
So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to select this. And if you go to type and you go to insert special character down here at the bottom and you go to symbols, I'm sorry, you go to markers, um, the very first one is current page number. And I click that and it types in an A. Now, I can't just type in a capital letter A in this text box and have that work. You actually need to go to type, um, insert special character markers, current page number. Um, it's only says A because that matches to this parent, but it's confusing and you wish they create a new symbol, but um, they haven't and so we have to do with that. But since that A is in there, I can now click on my pages and that says C2 and that says II and that says IV and that says two and that says four, okay? So, and this automatically numbers our pages. And if I, and so now I'd want to go back up here. And if I option drag this, it will, well, actually I'm going to do this over. So now the thing is, This might be a hundred pages long, in which case these numbers are gonna start having more and more characters. We tend to want to align these, you know, if it was sitting in the middle of the page, we'd center it. If it's aligned over here, we wanna align it left. If we wanna, if we want it over here, we wanna align it right. I go to my properties. There is two special alignment properties over here under your under the paragraph controls. So I've got this set align left. If I take and duplicate this, uh, sorry, this is all very complicated, but it's very very useful. So. So I've aligned this, that's aligned left. I bring this over here. To actually have it come out right, I would wanna set this to align right, like that. And we talked about styles last class. It would be really useful if these page numbers were in a style and only in a single style. And if they are on different alignments, they can't be on the same style. So what we have is a special option where instead of flush left, I actually have a choice of, if it will just show up. Okay, this is aligned towards the spine and align away from the spine. And the cool thing, sorry. The cool thing is that if I go option and drag, that's still aligned away from the spine, but as soon as I hit the spine, it jumps over to the other side. And now I could actually create a style for my page numbers. Say I want this to be italic. Um, and I generally want it to be smaller than the body text because it's not the page numbers are not as important as the body text. 
And so I would now go to paragraph styles. Click there, call it page number. Click that. Oh, come on. Click OK. And now those are identical. Then I go to my pages and that's two, three, and that's four, five, and so on. And if I wanna change them, I can change them using the style and it'll be quick and easy and fast. So. Basic character format. Mahi preview. Noble black. Click OK. All my page numbers have changed. So um, there is one problem with using master pages, and that's that. You're all familiar with layers. Yes, no. Yes. Okay, so every time you create something in this InDesign document, it's on top of everything else. Well, the fact of the matter is that everything on the master page is below anything that you create on your pages. And so if I were to go here and add, say I want this to be black or dark gray or what have you, um, you'll see that anything that from the master page gets covered up and we lose it. Um, there are ways to take things from the master page and make them live on your document and move them around, but there's actually sort of a simpler way to deal with this. Um, and the simpler wheel, way to deal with this is to go to your window layers. And I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to call it page numbers, click OK, go to my master page, um, and I can select all these things that are on the master page and go to my layers. Oh, there's and drag them up to this new layer. And it's now higher in the stacking order than anything that's on layer one. And if I go here, you'll see now that my page number and my tag here have all are now all on the top and I can do anything I want on this page and the page numbers will show up above it. Okay, makes sense. Convoluted, yes. Makes sense. But um, it's a kind of a useful way of handling things. Then, 7.48, what time is it? Okay, uh, it's 8.45. Okay, all right, next. 
Okay, there was a couple of things that I wanted to mention about the master pages still. So when you have master pages, sometimes you, um, the things that are on the master page are not editable on your main page. So I click on alphabet and I can't select that. I click on this page number, I can't select it. If you need to change something that's on a master page, if I hold command and shift and click, you'll see that it gets transferred from the master page to this page and it's now editable. So this might become glyphs, for instance. And it's in exactly the right place and in the exactly the right style. And um, so that's kind of handy. If I want this page number to be white instead of black, for instance, I command and shift and click and select that, make it white. Okay. The problem would become if you want to move some pages around. So first of all, this text is linked to this text. And then these master page items are no longer connected to the master page. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is command shift and click on that box as well. That'll make things a little bit easier when I'm gonna show you. We can very simply move pages around here. If I take this page and move it to the right of that page, you'll see that that is moved over. Um, this master page item has been added again. This major um, master page item has been added again. This page number we're going to need to delete. And if we want this one to be white again, we're going to need to redo it. Command shift click and then change that. Um, but the text would now be out of order. So we probably don't want to do something like that. Generally, you would want to take these items here in your document if I wanted to move this. And I would take and move this to there. And now I have a blank page. And this is now still in order there. And again, I'm still going to need to delete that page number and fix it by going shift command click. And like that. Really? Interesting. There. And so that did that. So I would just be aware also, um, if you notice when I move this over, it doesn't line up properly with the bleed, so I'll need to shift that over. Um, just expect that if you're using master pages and to do things, and then you start moving pages around from what you originally designed, there will probably be areas that you need to go back and revise. Um, and I would probably, if you're gonna move pages around, save your document, do a save as, then make the changes to the new copy of your document. That way, if there is an error or a problem, um, you haven't lost your original version and you can um, go back. 